Hello everyone, welcome back to this series called Finance Current Affairs, where we pick up some important financial topics and we try and discuss them with the help of different questions. So before I move on to the first question, if you have not yet subscribed to our channel, then please do subscribe and hit the bell icon so that whenever a new video comes up, you can be notified about the same. If you want the free PDFs of these sessions, then they'll be provided on the Telegram group. So if you have not yet joined this very group, then the link is in the description below. You can join this group for the free PDFs. Now coming to the first question, which says, the National Stock Exchange has launched a new corporate governance initiative. It is a framework that prescribes higher standards of corporate governance for the listed companies than those required by the regulations. So what is this new initiative called? Recently, NSC, that is your National Stock Exchange, has launched a new corporate governance initiative. There are already various regulations in place which the listed companies need to adhere to. So already existing companies have already to listed companies hai unke liye kaafi rules and regulations already hai jo governance pe focus rakhte hai ki kaise better transparency and accountability maintain ki jaye what rules and regulations should be adhered by different firms to ensure more transparency more accountability we already have a framework in place but a new framework we can say has been introduced on by the NSC in order to further enhance the standards of corporate governance. So, wo regulations to already hai, wo to listed companies ko follow karne hi hai, iske alawa thore baut aur norms hai, jo is very initiative ne prescribe kiye hai. So, what is this initiative of NSC called? The answer is option D, NSC Prime. So, National Stock Exchange Prime is that very framework. This framework has various more norms which the listed companies can voluntarily adhere to to enhance their governance. So corporate governance is all about how a company is governed, how is it directed, is it adhering to all the necessary regulations to ensure transparency, to ensure governance. So all such norms are there in place. This very new initiative has some additional norms which deal with strengthening the independence of the boards which deals with your independent directors, which deals with the auditors, which also deals in removing various conflict of interest kinds of situations, which has uh, focused on strengthening your financial disclosures, thereby improving the quality of public information. So, these norms that this initiative has prescribed, these are transparency or better karta hai, governance ko or better karne pe focus rakta hai. So, like we already have some norms related to independent directors, related to auditors, some more additional norms have been prescribed by this very framework. Okay. Now, these additional disclosures will ensure high quality of public information and greater transparency. So, in focus yehi rahega ki zada se zada correct information share ki jaye, company jo hai wo apne operations mein transparency maintain kare and if the companies are adhering to this then it will obviously bring in more investors. All NSC listed companies can adopt NSC Prime voluntarily. So, yaha pe mandatory nahi kiya gaya hai isko jo bhi listed companies hai and jo NSC bhi listed companies hai wo voluntarily isko accept kar sakti hai. Now you would be thinking when there is no mandation to, for, to basically adhere to this very framework, why will the companies prefer it? See, if any company is following better governance norms, the company will benefit. Okay, it will ensure more transparency, more better operations and there are various investors, especially the high net worth individuals or some quality investors like your institutional investors. So they usually invest in any company after checking all these kinds of things, after checking whether the company has good go governance or not. So if any listed company adheres to this framework, improves on it go its governance, then it is likely to attract more quality investors. That's the reason why companies are likely to accept this. Okay, so voluntarily when the companies will be following it, it uh, they will come under the ambit of NSC and NSC will be monitoring it. Now, talking about what all this initiative will bring, so it's going to raise the bar of corporate governance standards in India. Already, kuch rules regulations hai. Agar ye jo 
कॉपरेट गवर्नेंस स्टैंडर्ड्स इस फ्रेमवर्क में सजेस्ट किए गए वो कंपनीज फॉलो करने लगेंगी तो कॉर्पोरेट गवर्नेंस के स्टैंडर्ड्स इंडिया में और बढ़ जाएंगे और बेटर कंपनीज के ऑपरेशंस हो जाएंगे ट्रांसपेरेंसी हो जाएगी और इन्वेस्टर्स का ट्रस्ट और ज्यादा बूस्ट अप होगा इट विल इनेबल द इन्वेस्टर्स टू आइडेंटिफाई द कंपनीज विच आर वॉलेंट्रली अधियरिंग टू दी स्टैंडर्ड ऑफ कॉपरेट गवर्नेंस विच विल ब्रॉडन द क्वालिटी ऑफ इन्वेस्टर्स इन लिस्टेड कंपनीज सो जो कंपनीज इस गुड गवर्नेंस स्टैंडर्ड्स को एक्सेप्ट करेंगी वो क्वालिटी इन्वेस्टर्स को अपनी तरफ अट्रैक्ट करेंगी एंड द काइंड ऑफ इन्वेस्टर्स इफ दे इम्प्रूव इन योर कंपनी देन योर कंपनी स्लाइटली टू फ्राइश मोर इट विल स्ट्रेंथन द ट्रस्ट इन दी कैपिटल मार्केट्स एंड ओवरऑल इट विल इंश्योर बेटर गवर्नेंस बेटर ट्रांसपेरेंसी बेटर डिस्कलोजर्स विल हेल्प द कंपनीज टू स्टे इवन मोर स्ट्रॉगर even more sustainable they have developed even more sustainable business which can help them during their hard times okay jab mushkil aayegi koi problematic situations aayegi agar company acche governance standards already follow karti aayi hai to wo strong enough hogi uske sath deal karne mein so this was all which i wanted to discuss about this very framework now coming to the next question which says identify the correct statements so here we have few statements which relate to currency depreciation so let's first discuss about the concept of currency depreciation currency appreciation how depreciation is different from devaluation and then we'll come back to the question before discussing these concepts why i am talking about the indian currency right now because recently there were a lot of articles about this thing that indian rupee is the worst performing currency of asia in this entire year especially if you go to the bloomberg articles it mentioned about indian rupee being the worst performing asian currency now what do i mean by worst performing asian currency if you compare the indian rupee with the dollar and if you compare other asian currencies with the dollar what we have observed is that the indian rupee has depreciated a lot because it has depreciated a lot that's why it is being mentioned over here as the worst performing currency now let's see the reasons behind the fall in the value of our currency and what is this depreciation all about so indian currency is set to end the year as the asia's worst performing currency and why we are seeing a fall in the value of rupee that's because foreign funds are fleeing from our nation stocks bahut se aise foreign investors hai jinhone india mein invest kiya tha but wo ab apna paisa withdraw kar rahe hain india se jis wajah se indian rupee ki value kafi kam ho rahi hai if you take the value of indian rupee in the last quarter from september to december this year it declined 2.2% and why we saw this major decline that was because of the global funds worth 4 billion dollars being pulled out from the country stock market indian markets mein jo foreign investors ne paisa invest kiya hua tha ek huge chunk us paise ka yahan se withdraw kar liya gaya hai jo foreign investment india mein aayi thi ab uske outflows dikh rahe hain when you are selling off your money which you have when you are basically selling off the stake which you had in indian markets you are basically taking back your money to your own country so what will happen if you are uh, pulling out the money from india the demand for rupee will fall and that of the foreign currency will rise so when you are suppose a us investor had invested in india now he is pulling out the money so what he will do he will demand dollars to basically go and invest back that money in us so the demand of rupee falls and its value fall and that demand for the us dollars increase and so does the value of dollar increase that's one reason why we are seeing a major fall in value of rupee vis-a-vis the dollar the downfall or the depreciation here makes indian rupee the worst performing asian currency so ye major downfall or depreciation ho raha hai hamari currency mein is wajah se kaha ja raha hai ki indian rupee jo hai wo asia ki worst performing currency hai now let's discuss the concept of depreciation and how is it different from devaluation depreciation ka matlab hai fall in the value theek hai to jab aapki currency ki value kam ho rahi hai that is currency depreciation it's the fall in the value of currency suppose today the value of 1 dollar is rupees 60 means with 1 dollar you can buy 60 rupees worth of goods in india and with 60 rupees you can buy 1 dollar worth of goods in us now suppose tomorrow the value of 1 dollar becomes 
rupees 65 that means the value of dollar has appreciated and the value of rupee has fallen that means it has depreciated pehle 1 dollar mein aap 60 rupees ka saman khareed sakte the ab aap 1 dollar mein 65 rupees ka saman india se khareed sakte ho iska matlab hai ki dollar ki value bad gayi hai usme ab zyada indian goods aapke aa sakte hain वही अगर हम ऑपोजिट साइड से देखें पहले आपको 60 रुपीस चाहिए होते थे अगर आपको 1 डॉलर का कोई गुड खरीदना है अब आपको वही गुड खरीदने के लिए और पैसे देने पड़ेंगे यू विल नीड 65 रुपीस टू बाय दैट सेम गुड ऑफ 1 डॉलर दैट मींस देयर हैज बीन अ फॉल इन द वैल्यू ऑफ योर करेंसी बिकॉज़ ऑफ व्हिच द थिंग्स बिकेम एक्सपेंसिव फॉर यू सो दैट इज रुपी डिप्रीशिएटिंग इफ दिस 1 डॉलर वुड हैव बिकम रुपीस 50 that means now with one dollar you can get less of rupee and that means the rupee has appreciated. So depreciation is basically your rupee value becoming less valuable, weaker than what it was earlier. I hope you have this depreciation or appreciation concept. Now it is often said that depreciation in rupee is a double edged spot. जो डेप्रीसिएशन हो रही है रुपी में उसका एक पॉजिटिव साइड भी है एक मेजर पॉजिटिव साइड भी है और एक मेजर नेगेटिव साइड भी है दैट्स व्हाई इट इज कॉल्ड द डबल एज्ड स्वॉट व्हेन आई टॉक अबाउट द पॉजिटिव दैट पॉजिटिव इज दैट दिस वीकर करेंसी विल प्रमोट योर एक्सपोर्ट्स बेसिकली योर गुड्स विल बिकम मोर ड्यूक्रेटिव फॉर द अदर कंट्री बिकॉज़ देयर वैल्यू हैज अप्रिशिएटेड एंड दे कैन बाय मोर ऑफ योर गुड्स विद देयर करेंसी so weaker currency support exports as the products and services become cheaper to buy for the other nations ab us ka koi person 1 dollar ke badle 60 rupees ke indian goods khareed sakta tha ab agar us dollar ki value ho gayi to 65 so wo 5 rupees ke additional good khareed sakega usi same 1 dollar se so he will buy more of the indian goods he will import more of Indian goods which will promote the India's export. जो चीज़ India से export हो रही है, मतलब वो US में import हो रही है. So, आपके, उनके imports बढ़ेंगे, तो आपके exports बढ़ रहे हैं, क्योंकि आप उन्हें भेज रहे हो चीज़े. So, if your currency depreciates, then the product will become cheaper for the other country to import and thus your exports will rise. But there is a negative side and that is imported inflation because your imports become costlier. Earlier, with 60 rupees, you were able to buy one product. Now, when your currency has depreciated to one dollar is equal to 65 rupees, for buying same product, you need five more rupees. That is, now you have to buy product which you had to buy in 60 rupees. So, you product you are importing more costlier product. When you are importing costlier product, you will be selling that product at a higher price which will lead to inflation in your economy. So, positive side of depreciation is that it will boost your exports. But the negative side is that your imports will become costlier and it will lead to imported inflation. So, that's why depreciation is a double-edged sword. Now, at times, people are not able to differentiate between depreciation and devaluation. They think that both are same. But there is a slight difference. Although both lead to the fall in the value of currency. Depreciation ka matlab bhi hai ki aapki currency ki value kam ho rahi hai vis-a-vis -vis other currency. Devaluation ka matlab bhi yahi hai. But what's the difference? See, when your value of currency is falling because of the demand and supply market forces, then that is depreciation. But when the value is falling because central bank has taken this decision to reduce the value of currency, consciously it has taken this decision, that is devaluation. Market forces ki wajah se, demand or supply kitna hai currency ka, uski wajah se jab 1 dollar jo 60 rupees ka tha, wo 1 dollar 65 ka ho gaya, to hum usse kahenge depreciation. Lekin agar aaj value 1 dollar ki 60 rupee hai, और सेंट्रल बैंक कहता है कि कल से वैल्यू हम फिक्स कर रहे हैं कि 1 डॉलर 65 रुपीस का हो जाएगा दैट इज डीवैल्यूएशन जब कॉन्शियसली सेंट्रल बैंक ये डिसीजन ले रहा है दैट्स द स्लाइट डिफरेंस बिटवीन डीवैल्यूएशन एंड डिप्रीसिएशन यूजुअली व्हेन द फ्लोटिंग एक्सचेंज रेट सिस्टम इज फॉलोड देन वी सी डिप्रीसिएशन एंड इन केस ऑफ फिक्स्ड और सेमी फिक्स्ड एक्सचेंज रेट वेयर सेंट्रल बैंक इज टेकिंग द डिसीजन टू इंक्रीज और रिड्यूस द वैल्यू ऑफ योर करेंसी विजिवी द फॉरेन करेंसी दैट इज devaluation. I hope you have understood the difference. Now, 
we are seeing that uh, indian rupee is said to be the worst performing asian currency and that's because we have seen a lot of depreciation in the indian rupee let's see some of the reasons why we are seeing this this depreciation in the indian rupee one is high trade deficit so our imports are higher than compared to your exports so hamare exports kam hai vis a vis our imports and that's the reason behind the depreciation of indian rupee when you are importing more that means you have to pay them in their currency so the demand of foreign currency is increasing as compared to your own currency when foreign currency is demanded more it is likely to appreciate second reason is the policy divergence between rbi and federal reserve RBI और फेडरल रिजर्व जो पॉलिसी फॉलो करते हैं दोनों ही पॉलिसीज ऐसी हैं जो डॉलर को एक बूस्ट अप देंगी डॉलर की वैल्यू बढ़ाने की तरफ है विज वी इंक्रीजिंग द वैल्यू ऑफ इंडियन रुपी लाइक इफ आई टॉक अबाउट यूएस दे वॉन्ट दे वॉन्ट फेवरेबल इंटरेस्ट रेट दे वॉन्ट देयर इकोनॉमी टू फ्लरिश एंड दे हैव सिमिलर काइंड ऑफ पॉलिसीज बट इफ आई टॉक अबाउट आर बी आई वॉट आर बी आई इज डूइंग इट इज बाइंग द लॉट ऑफ डॉलर्स टू बिल्ड अप इट्स रिजर्व हम डॉलर्स खरीद रहे हैं ताकि हमारी रिजर्व बिल्डअप हो सके सो दैट दैट रिजर्व कैन हेल्प अस ड्यूरिंग द टाइम ऑफ एनी काइंड ऑफ वॉलेटैलिटी नाउ इफ वी आर बाइंग द डॉलर्स दैट मीन द डिमांड फॉर द डॉलर्स इज मोर वेन डॉलर्स आर डिमांडेड मोर देन ऑब्वियसली वी कैन सी अ राइज इन द वैल्यू ऑफ डॉलर्स विज वी रूपी ओके सो दैट्स द रीजन वाई इंडियन रूपी इज एप्रिशिएटिंग एंड द फॉरन करेंसी इज अप्रिशिएटिंग थर्ड इज द आउटफ्लो ऑफ कैपिटल foreigners are basically taking away the money they have invested in the indian stocks when you invested money in india you demanded indian currency to invest so at that time the indian currency would have had higher value but now you are taking back that money to say us aapne jo paisa jab india mein invest kiya hoga tab indian rupee ki demand ho ab aap paisa withdraw kar rahe ho india se jab aap india se paisa withdraw kar rahe ho to us dollars ki demand ho rahi hai aur indian रुपी का सप्लाई बढ़ रहा है इंडियन रुपी इज नॉट डिमांडेड सो इसकी वजह से इंडियन रुपी में फॉल आएगा और यूएस डॉलर्स की डिमांड बढ़ गई है तो उसका वैल्यू में राइज आएगा सो फॉल इन द वैल्यू ऑफ इंडियन रुपी राइज इन द डॉलर्स इज लीडिंग टू दी डेप्रीसिएशन ऑफ इंडियन रुपी विज इन योर फॉरन करेंसी एंड देन देर आर कंसर्न रिलेटेड टू कोविड एज वेल and because of that where various kind of disruptions are there in the economy people are not able to invest so such kind of problems to certain extent are there exports imports are hampered because of which the overall uh, economy is suffering and so is the indian rupee so this was all that i wanted to discuss about depreciation now coming back to the question and identifying the correct statements सो so, पहली स्टेटमेंट है कि करेंसी डिप्रीसिएशन जो है वो है वैल्यू ऑफ करेंसी में फॉल दिस इज करेक्ट सेकेंड से इज अर्लियर वन यूएस डॉलर वॉज इक्वल टू सेवेंटी रुपी नाउ वन यूएस डॉलर इज इक्वल टू सिक्सटी फाइव रुपी ओके सो दिस एम्प्लाइज रुपी हैज डेप्रीशिएटेड नो इट एम्प्लाइज रुपी हैज अप्रीशिएटेड सो दिस इज इन करेक्ट पहले एक सेवेंटी रुपीज चाहिए होते थे आपको एक डॉलर का गुड खरीदने के लिए अब आप वही गुड कम रुपीज में खरीद सकते हो क्योंकि रुपी की वैल्यू बढ़ गई है It says the U.S. Federal Reserve has decided to speed up its taper timeline, an outcome of higher inflation. In which of the following ways can it impact India? I think I took a one session regarding this previously as well. In fact, I took two different sessions. One where I talked about the high inflation rates going on in U.S. currently. and secondly i took one session where i talked about the us going to follow a more stricter for policy okay going for its 
tapering program. Now let's see what is it all about and then we'll come back to the question and answer it. अभी तक सारे सेंट्रल बैंक्स क्या कर रहे थे काफी लिबरल पॉलिसी फॉलो कर रहे थे इकोनॉमीज में और लिक्विडिटी ला रहे थे पैसा बेसिकली uh, इकोनॉमी में और ज्यादा दे वर प्रोवाइडिंग द मनी टू द इकोनॉमी सो दैट द पीपल कैन सो दैट द डिमांड कैन बी क्रिएटेड द इकोनॉमिक एक्टिविटीज कैन बी ब्रॉट बैक ऑन ट्रैक जो कोविड की वजह से प्रॉब्लम्स आई है उससे अब रिकवर करने के लिए सेंट्रल बैंक्स का बहुत सपोर्ट रहा है उन्होंने बहुत सा पैसा इकोनॉमी में इंजेक्ट किया है दे हैव प्रोवाइडेड अ लॉट ऑफ सप्लाई ऑफ मनी इन द इकोनॉमी सो दैट द इकोनॉमिक एक्टिविटीज कैन बी ब्रॉट बैक टू ट्रैक एंड सो द इकोनॉमिक ग्रोथ कैन बी इंश्योर्ड वन सच स्टेप वॉज टेकन बाई द यू एस गवर्नमेंट एज वेल द यू एस फेडरल रिजर्व ऑल्सो टूक दिस डिसीजन ऑफ गोइंग विद इट्स क्वान्टिटेटिव ईजिंग प्रोग्राम वे आर दे हेल्प द इकोनॉमी अ लॉट दे इंजेक्टेड अ लॉट ऑफ मनी इन द इकोनॉमी बट नाउ वेन द इकोनॉमी स्टार्टेड रिकवरिंग वॉट इट डिसाइडेड वॉज टू बेसिकली स्लो डाउन इट्स क्वान्टिटेटिव ईजिंग प्रोग्राम इन फैक्ट गो फॉर टेपरिंग Tapering is basically reversing the kind of policy you are following. So they were following a quantitative easing policy. Now, when they will reverse that, when they will come up with more stricter policy, reduce the supply of money in the economy, that is tapering. अभी तक आर जो Federal Reserve है उन्होंने बहुत सारा पैसा economy में डाला, बहुत सारा money supply आया. अब वो reverse policy follow करेंगे, where they will limit the amount of money in the economy or reduce that level. That is called tapering. So U.S. already uh, basically there was news already that U.S. is going to taper up its program. It will now reverse the quantitative easing which it was following. But what is recently news is that they have speeded up this process. जो process जो आपकी ये reversal होना था आपकी policy का जो next year के mid तक expected था वो और उसकी speed बढ़ा दी गई है and we expect that by march they will conclude this tapering program so why is us in such a hurry to reverse its quantitative easing strategy one major reason for that is higher inflation ek session humne ye bhi liya tha jahan humne discuss kiya tha ki around 3 decades around 30 saal se zyada ke time ke baad us ki jo inflation hai wo kafi high rate pe pahunch chuki hai and that inflation is the reason behind speeding up the tapering process by us federal reserve now what federal reserve has decided and how is it going to impact india let's discuss that as well so during the pandemic what federal reserve did was it bought around 120 billion dollars worth of bonds so us ke central bank ne itne zyada bonds kharide when they are buying the bonds that means they are releasing more money in the economy the money supply is likely to increase when the government is buying the bonds so it bought around 80 billion of treasuries and 40 billion dollars worth of the mortgage backed securities now what it has decided recently in the month of december federal reserve had its meeting and it has decided to double the reduction in the monthly asset purchases so jo wo asset purchase karke money supply economy mein bada rahe the usko unhone kaha tha ki ab hum ise reduce karenge and they have now doubled the reduction so that means they will reduce the supply of money in the economy and through this very step they are likely to conclude their tapering program by march next year other than that one additional step which they are going to take uh, is that they will increase the interest rates so when the interest rates will rise then the borrowing will become more expensive people are likely to borrow less that means less money available with them so that will help curb the problem of inflation so ye steps hai jo federal reserve as far as its monetary policy is concerned is going to take now why did it speed up this process as i have already told you the inflation level is spiking in us jaise india ka 2 se 6 percent ke beech inflation rahe ye target level rehta hai for india if we compare it that with that of us us has a inflation target of just 2 percent unki 2 percent tak inflation rehni chahiye now if i talk about the us inflation level it spiked to 6.8 percent it is highest in three decades ओके नवंबर में इन्फ्लेशन यूएस की बहुत ज्यादा बढ़ गई थी दैट्स व्हाई दे वर प्लानिंग टू इंक्रीज द इंटरेस्ट रेट्स एंड नाउ दे हैव दिस दिस हैज पुट अ लॉट ऑफ प्रेशर ऑन 
the US Central Bank and it is taking the step to speed up their taper process. With the US economy picking up, the retail prices are going up dramatically. And the Fed's dilemma is same like that of RBI, uh, where they are caught between rising inflation and need to revive the economy. RBI also is facing the problem of inflation a bit and they also want their economy to grow, to thrive. So uh, taking into consideration the pandemic which was there in India, Indian government ha- or we can say Indian Central Bank has been supportive. It is still going on with its accommodative stance but US has decided to speed up its process. It is also caught in this dilemma and although India, India can tolerate the inflation going on because it's within the target range, but it is not for US. US may inflation target rate se bohat zyada bad gaye hai jis wajah se unko ab major step lene padenge interest rate badhana padega. All right. So the kind of policy which US government followed I discussed in that very session also that it uh, provided a lot of money directly to the people because of which people had a lot of money in hand they started demanding the demand picked up but the supply side disruptions were there because of which because of this demand supply gap the inflation was there in us the prices of those goods rose okay so that is the whole concept which i wanted to discuss here now talking about its positive possible impact on india kya impact is step ka india mein ho sakta hai agar us apne interest rates badha dega okay if it's going to if it's speeding up its tapering program what is the possible impact on india one is rising us interest rate will lead to us financial markets being more lucrative option to invest and more foreign investment outflows from india interest rates ab us ke badh jayenge that means the investors who are investing in the us market will also earn a higher interest rate although the borrowing costs will rise but the investments will become more attractive because you will earn more interest rate so the ones who came to india invested in india will now withdraw their money back from india and go and invest it in us so india mein jo paisa invested tha yahan se nikal ke wo wapas us mein invest hoga so india se ab outflows honge that's one possible impact secondly when you are withdrawing your money from india and investing in us it will create demand for us and less for the indian rupee because of which the dollar value will appreciate and that of rupee will depreciate as i discussed in the previous question also so second impact is the rupee depreciation ek hai ki foreign investment outflows honge dusra hai rupee depreciate karega when your rupee is depreciating there is risk of imported inflation so inflation will be there that is the third possible impact okay your crude oil will become costlier your other commodities will become costlier once which the things which you are importing they will become more costlier okay and the higher prices will worsen the situation and it will put pressure on rbi to rethink its stance and raise the rates farther faster than anticipated so if inflation is happening if such kind of impact is happening because of the us us decision then rbi might be forced to rethink on its stance agar ye inflation ka impact bahut zyada hua kafi zyada inflation badh gayi to rbi ko sochna padega ki hum kaisi monetary policy follow kare kya hame bhi interest rates bada deni chahiye kyunki yahan inflation bhi ho rahi hai yahan se foreign investment outflows bhi ho rahe hain so rbi will have to rethink on its policy so these are some possible impacts all right now coming back to the question we have to identify the possible impacts so net foreign investment outflows from india yes rupee will depreciate yes there will be high inflation yes so all the above ways are the ways in which this taper timeline means speed up can impact india with this i would like to end up this session thank you so much